In this video, we will take a look on how to set up and use Personal KV in a fresh Next.js project. Of course, this will also work for existing projects, but for this video, we will just create a fresh project. So first, let's create our project. And once it's run, let's open it up in VS Code like this. And now we actually want to add this project to Vercel. And in order to do that, let's first uh, put it in GitHub and then link it inside of the Vercel dashboard as a new project. So first I'll create a new GitHub repository. So I'll open GitHub, go to new repository and give it a name like this and then just create a repository. And I will copy this code over here in order to add the remote and switch back to the VS code. And I'll open the terminal and let's paste it in like this. Now, if we switch back to the GitHub, refresh the page, we should see our repo over here. Great. So now let's add this as a project in Vercel. So I will go to vercel.com slash new and it should list your repositories over here. And here is our Versal KV example that we just did. So I will just click import and I'm going to also put it on deploy. And now if we go back to the uh, dashboard, we can see our project up here and we can see the status of it. Okay, so now our project is in Versal. So next, let me open up this Versal KV quick start example and let's scroll down a little bit. So First, we need to install the Versal KV package. So let's do that. So I'll copy that, open VS Code and paste it in like this. Great. Next, we need to create a new database inside of our project. So let's do that. So I'll go to Versal. I'm in my Versal KV example project and I'll click the storage tab over here. And then I will click create next to the KV and select the KV Durable Redis over here. Click continue, accept, give it a name and a region and create and continue. And then we can select which environment we want to have this uh, database available for. I'll leave it as like that. Click connect. And now our project, the Versal KV example is connected to this Versal KV uh, example Redis database. So let's see what's next. So we have created our database over here. Then we can check if the uh, environment variables were set. So now that we connected this database to this project, it should automatically add the appropriate environment variables for us. So I will click the settings tab over here. And if I go to the environment variables, I should see the KV environment variables down here and I see them. So it looks like the connection was made successfully. Great. Next, let's put some data inside of our uh, database so we can use the CLI for this. And let's use this example over here. So I'll copy that, go back to the project and go to the storage, open up the Redis database. And right here we have the CLI for the database. So I will paste in the example data. Looks like it went through. We can double check it and see if the data is there. Looks like it was saved successfully. So now we have some data inside of our database. Next, we need to add the environment variables for our uh, project locally. So if we go to the quick start guide again, we can see that we can use the virtual CLI to pull these environment variables automatically. That's one way, but I'm actually going to go to the project again. And in the storage tab, I can see here I have the env local tab. So here I have all the environment variables that I need for this database. So what I'm going to do is actually just copy snippet over here, then switch to VS Code, create a new environment variable file like this, then open it up and paste in the variables like this. Save it. And now we have the environment variables in our local development environment. Next, let's see the quick start guide again. 
So now let's create an actual API route that we can use to get the data from the database. So I'm gonna use this snippet over here. So I initialized my Next.js project with the pages folder. So I'm not using the app router, but this all works with the app router too. I just decided for this to use the pages folder. So I can select from here the Next.js snippet, copy it. Let's switch to the VS code. And I'm just gonna open up the API and hello route and remove everything from here and paste in the code I copied. So right here, we are just importing the KV and then inside the handler, we get the user information by calling the hgetall function for this uh, KV database. And this all is automatically initialized based on the environment variables we have in our environment variables file. So let's save it and fire up our server like this. And I will open up the localhost 3000. This is the front page and let's hit the API route. And looks like we are getting the correct data from the database inside the API route. Let's try to modify this data and see if we still get the correct data. So I will open the project and the storage view in Verge Cell. And inside of the client, I will type the following like this. So we are updating the user ID. Let's hit enter. And we can again check that it was saved. Looks like the ID was updated. So now if we go back to our API route and refresh the page, we should get the ID of 1337 in here. And looks like it's working. So there you go. That's super simple example how to use the virtual KV in a new project. And this of course works also for existing projects. Of course, this key value store is not suitable for every use case. And oftentimes you might want to use something like Postgres for your application or use case. Luckily, Virtual has the Virtual Postgres also. So if you want to learn how to set up and use Virtual Postgres, watch this video over here next.